Odivana Plus version 3 has been further improved according to Odivana. It already supported Cobus for a long time and does now also do Tidal and supports the Hi-Vis Audio Virtual Vault account. But most noticeable is the ability to decode MQA. Orivana Plus still is my favourite music player for Apple OS, save room. At one eighth of the price it is a very good choice for those that don't like the steep room price. Room does not yet decode MQA, but it does support networked audio adapters, something Orivana is not yet supporting. Please do note the yets, for Orivana Plus will support networked audio adapters in the near future. The rumor is it will be in version 3.1 and the rumor has it that Rune will support MQA decoding soon. Let me make clear that playing MQA files to an MQA enabled renderer like the Bluesound Node 2 or any MQA enabled DAC can be done with a bit perfect player as long as you keep the volume setting on the player at 100% and switch off all DSP functions like upsampling and filtering. But the number of MQA enabled DACs and renderers still is limited and you might not immediately want to invest in a new DAC or renderer again. Then core decoding of MQA, although not equal to the full decoding, might be a good in between. For those that don't know Orivana, it started out as a bit perfect player for the Mac that used iTunes for library functions. It also enabled automatic sampling rate switching. Normally computers convert all audio to one output sampling rate, regardless of the source. BitPerfect players like Orivana are able to send unaltered music data to an external DA converter. Version 2 brought a standalone mode that later could be controlled by an iOS app. It can be set to more or less take over the Mac, temporarily halting any process running that might influence the sound quality. If you like, it can also perform sample rate conversion using the Isotope 64-bit sample rate converter. This is especially handy if your DA converter has a mediocre or worse upsampling. When the number crunching power of a computer is better than that of a DAC, which it normally will be, it might give a better time resolution during upsampling and using a DAC at higher sampling rates might also make it easier for a DAC to sound good since a milder reconstruction filter can be used. A quality setting can be adjusted to prevent CPU overload, especially when converting from DSD to PCM or vice versa the workload can become rather high so check the activity monitor to see the workload. This is the part where I describe how a device on the test sounds. But provided that Ordovana Plus is able to send the bits unharmed to the output of the computer, what can go wrong? Well, quite a lot, but the question is, can that be blamed on Ordovana? A year ago I reviewed version 2 Plus and compared it with J River Media Center. I also did comparisons earlier with Channel D Pure Music and Sonic Studio Almara all using the same hardware of course. They all sounded identical with the exception of Amara that sounded more rounded as if there was some loss in high frequency. Let me give you some clues about things that might cause sound differences that are not caused by the player software. First, a Mac Mini is the best choice and the MacBooks are the least. They are not bad but a Mac Mini sounds cleaner. I am told this is due to the noisy circuit that drives the video display. I have no experience with replacing the switching mode power supply in a Mac Mini for an external linear type, but that seems to improve the matters too. The solution I now use is to keep all com computer equipment away from my stereo and use networked audio adapters. In my 1000 Euro Set 3, I use a Raspberry Pi 3B with a Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Pro board to provide SPDIF. I would advise the Audiophonic Linear Power Supply or the equally good iFi iPower Switching Mode Power Supply I reviewed earlier. 
The S-Booster or Ultra Caps power supply I recently reviewed are great too, but in that set I would spend the extra money on other matters. In my other two sets, see the about menu in the hbproject.com for details, I use either the Sonori Micro Rendu or the SOTM SMS200 network audio adapters and here I do use the S-Booster or Ultra Caps power supply. This way you can ban out all negative influences of the computer and use dedicated hardware to out output a USB signal elsewhere in the network. This part of the room setup. Olivana does not support networked audio adapters yet, but on their forum it was mentioned it might be implemented in version 3.1. And that would be great news. Just use the computer that already is in the house for storage and music server functionality and an NNA, a networked audio adapter, in the living. In practice, Orivana hasn't changed that much, with the exception of MQA core decoding. As said, it is MQA core decoding, meaning that a 192 kHz file will be played at 96 kHz. By the way, not all MQA files contain 192 kHz or higher material. There also is 44.1 and 48 kHz material, which is, by the way, good practice. If a master is at 44.1 kHz, there's no point upsampling it to 176.8. That would give the impression of a high res file, which it isn't. Anyway, Orivana is up to date again and I can't wait for 3.1. As soon as this is out, I'll be back with a video. So if you want to stay informed, subscribe to this channel, my newsletter or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video, but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my about questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. The links are in the show note. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.